welcome to another Interstellar Modeler. In the next series of videos, I plan to show you how I'm going to paint and detail this helmet here. This kit was purchased off of eBay and comes complete with this helmet that you see here along with the side pieces. And I also purchased the shield that's going to go inside here. So this is an opportunity to use some of the techniques I used on my models um, because I have to make this uh, helmet look kind of beat up and used and worn and uh, to try and duplicate the look that we see in Empire Strikes Back. So the first step is to go ahead and cut the visor out and then prime it. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed with that. Alright, so a little time has elapsed since I took that last video there. I know to you it doesn't seem that way. But uh, this actually has been sitting around for at least a few weeks here. Um, so I finally did uh, cut out the visor as I was indicating I'd do there. And I also primed it and then painted it a silver color. And uh, so now the next step is to start uh, applying the battle damage. So as we all know, Boba Fett appeared in uh, two of the episodes of the original movies there. And uh, his costume was battle damaged and worn. And um, as you can see in this picture, there's a lot of battle damage to apply to this helmet. So here we now have the backside, which I've already started this process. And let me just kind of show you some more details. Now, if you go to a website called The Dented Helmet, it is a website that's exclusively uh, geared towards making Boba Fett gear. And um, a number of people have gone to the trouble of posting templates that you can use to apply the battle damage. And that's what you see here. This is for one side of the helmet now. And uh, what you essentially do is you cut this out. Uh, you have to size it to your helmet, which uh, isn't too hard to do. In fact, I just printed this off of the uh, website. It's uh, in a PDF form. And it gives you the opportunity to print it on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper or letter size. And it came out this way, and it uh, is fairly close to the helmet that we have here. So um, I simply cut out the template here, and what you're supposed to do is lay this onto the panel. And then you take, uh, which I'm using just graph paper here, um, and you take a pencil and you start outlining the different areas. So here I'm going to give you a rough idea of what I did. So as I mentioned, I cut the template out, I uh, lined it up, taped it as you see here, and then I used a pencil to outline the areas uh, accordingly. So what we're going to do first here is apply the silver damage, and that is of course these lighter shaded areas here. So, once the template was lined up here, I used uh, graph paper underneath it, and then I just traced along, creating this pattern. Um, and I did that all along here, here, and here, and I also did the opposite side as well. So, once that was done, I lifted it off, and then I applied uh, a liquid mask solution, which I am using now this Humbral Mask All, simply because it's purple and it's fairly easy to see. And then I allow that to dry, and then I now painted a, I just got done painting actually, a dark gray color, and that's what you see here. So what I'm going to do next is remove the liquid mask and show you the um, exposed silver areas that we're going to see here. Okay, so now that we've removed the liquid mask, you can see now the patterns uh, that we have left now, exposing the silver underneath, as well as the gray uh, coat that's been painted over that. So we're going to now move on to um, applying this concrete color here. So we're going to go ahead and mask out some of these gray areas here. And uh, then mask over the silver parts again. And then we'll paint the concrete color. So I will move on with that and show you when that's done. All right, so now this uh, satin color is dry. And you can see I've already peeled off the liquid mask. So now we have three colors here that are revealed. We have the silver gray and a satin color. And uh, you can see if you look closely, I already have penciled in the areas I'm going to apply the last layer of liquid masking fluid. And I've already started on this side here. So um, what I'm going to do now is finish this side, of course, let it dry. We'll apply the last layer of paint. I'll peel that away and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so now we have the completed back panels here. Uh, at least they're almost complete. I still have a few other things I'm going to add here. Um, in the end, when everything's all painted, I'm going to use pastels to dirty up a bit too, so it'll look a little more authentic. But uh, again, you can see how this layered technique works really well. Now we have the silver, the dark gray, 
the concrete color and now this uh, dark green color here all uh, together here on the back panel and this is the opposite side here all right so now we're going to move on to some other parts of the helmet and I will show you my progress as we go along all right so definitely making some progress here uh, where I'm at at this point is I already applied the liquid mask to the areas where the silver is going to be exposed and uh, once I did that I uh, applied a gray color I concentrated the gray pretty much around the battle damaged areas there and uh, now what I'm doing is, uh, oh, and then I peeled away, of course, that liquid mask exposing the silver. And now what I'm doing is I remasked the areas um, overlapping some um, sections here where the gray is supposed to shine through. So you can see, for example, in this uh, template, uh, this is the effect that we're going for, just like we did on the back panels. So the next step is to just let this dry and then apply, I'm gonna use a Panzer green color uh, to the dome and this cheek area and then the last thing I'm going to do is then mask off this area and apply the black coloration to the upper cheek portion. Alright so I'm going to go ahead and move forward with that and I'll show you here shortly uh, how things are looking. Okay so I just wanted to show you the process of taking off the, the uh, liquid mask here. So uh, as you know we've painted now three colors. You have the silver, you have the dark gray, and finally the green. So all I'm doing here is just peeling this off and I found it pretty easy to do with just the rubber glove. It seems to just peel it away like that. And uh, the rubber actually helps to smooth the paint over. You don't have these bits and pieces that are lingering around there. All right. And you can see, it comes off pretty well. So I'll finish doing this, but I wanted to show you what the rest of this looks like. You can see how the pattern comes out. And uh, yeah, it looks, uh, looks pretty good. Pretty happy with the way this is turning out so far. All right, so you're, here you have the battle damage now that's been applied to the dome and cheek areas. I am using this uh, picture here as my guide. And uh, so this technique of using this uh, liquid mask along with these different layers of paint is working pretty well. Okay, so before I paint the red part of the helmet here, actually I actually decided to go ahead and work on the kill stripes. Now at first I was going to purchase a decal for this, but when watching, uh, after watching a video online, um, and I'll, at the end of this video by the way, I will mention a gentleman who's been very, very helpful with all of this uh, because he has a series of videos on how to paint a Boba Fett helmet. But after watching him do that, I decided I would give it a try as well. And um, after taping it up this way, it actually looks to me pretty straightforward. So uh, let me show you how it's uh, getting done here. Now, one thing I am impressed with is the amount of information that's online about how to put together a Boba Fett helmet. And uh, this is a perfect example here. So you see this little clear template I've cut out here. Um, this is something I found at the dentedhelmet.com. And essentially what you do is you take a a clear piece of, uh, it doesn't have to be clear, but uh, I just had to ha happen to have some clear stuff here. Um, and you cut out a piece in these dimensions here. So it's essentially about uh, 16 millimeters uh, uh, wide here and 35 millimeters tall. And uh, so the inner dimensions, once you um, measure all this out, it will give you a uh, rectangular area that's cut out in the center. So, um, Essentially you have uh, 8 millimeters in the middle here with 4 on each side and then 25 millimeters here with 14 and 6 millimeters on each side there. So when all said and done you end up with this little template and all you have to do is line up the template to your helmet and you just go from one to the next to the next to the next drawing them out and once you have them um, outlined onto the helmet there you just tape it over as you see here. Now obviously I'm going to go ahead and tape the rest of the helmet uh, so we can protect the uh, paint job on the rest of it here of course um, but I'm gonna go ahead and mask off using liquid mask again um, these areas here so that they look um, battle worn and so I'm gonna try to match the pattern that you see here and then we'll go ahead and paint yellow and then use an orange color to detail these last ones here so it'll actually fade from yellow to orange alright so that's pretty much it for now I'm gonna go ahead and mask everything off and paint it 
and then I will show you what the stripes look like when you're done.